This video is brought to you by the Intel Core i7-4770K Unlocked Processor. If you're a speed freak, add an Intel 3500 series SSD to your Haswell system for a truly enthusiast class experience. Welcome to my 1080p performance review of the GeForce GTX 760 from NVIDIA. This card uses the GK104 core, which is the same as the last generation GTX 670 and 660 Ti, the latter of which it replaces. However, there have definitely been some tweaks. This card is targeted squarely at 1080p gamers, so it's in that $250 sweet spot price point, and it delivers compelling performance in modern games at high details at 1080p. Although you might want to step up to something a little bit juicier like a GTX 780 if you want to game at resolutions above that. So what tweaks have been made? So a few things. Number one is clock speeds have been increased. Number two is that memory bandwidth has been increased. We've gone from a 192-bit bus on the 660 Ti to a 256-bit bus here. ROPs have also been increased from 24 to 32. However, there has been a decrease. It actually has fewer CUDA cores than the GTX 660 Ti that it replaces, so it remains to be seen how that all translates to real-world performance. Speaking of real-world performance, we test all of our games in as real-world scenarios as we can, meaning timed benchmarks using fraps. Yes, we know FCAT is more effective. However, we are only testing single GPU setups here, so it makes less of a difference in this case, and unfortunately, we don't have a frame capture setup up yet. So hopefully that's coming at some point. For our test bench, we've got a P9X79 Deluxe with 16 gigs of Kingston RAM, a Core i7-3960X at 4 gigahertz, an Antec High Current Pro 1000 watt, that's a platinum power supply, 128 gig SSD, and we are using Afterburner and or Precision for our overclocking needs with the NVIDIA 320.39 driver and AMD 13.6 beta driver. We have switched over to using beta drivers just so we can make sure we're getting the most out of all of these cards at the time that we're doing these videos. Just a reminder guys, we do run all of our graphics cards overclocked at Linus Tech Tips because we believe overclocking is relatively simple. We've done guides on it in the past. Watch our guides, do it because it is free performance. However, that means that sometimes the way cards stack up in our performance graphs is gonna look a little different from how other people's do. So if you check out the video description, we've got a link to the overclocks we're running our cards at. Most of those should be pretty attainable for most of you on your own graphics cards. So without further ado, let's get into the games. Starting with Metro Last Light, we see a reasonably strong performance for the 760. It comes in a little behind the 7950, but that stands to reason it is a little bit cheaper and it beats out the GTX 660. CTI. However, given that this is a generational increase in naming, sort of, because it's a 760 replacing a 660 Ti, which is typically a slightly uh, boosted up SKU, uh, maybe is not as much as we might have expected in terms of performance increase. And we're going to go through the slides pretty quickly because we're going to see uh, some pretty uh, repeating patterns here. So Tomb Raider is pretty much the same thing. So the 760 is a little bit faster than a 660 Ti, almost within margin of error for this one. Next up is Bioshock Infinite, where the 760 is just a smidgen faster than a GTX 660 Ti, almost within the margin of error. Moving right along, we've got Far Cry 3, where the 760 performs pretty much the same as the GTX 660 Ti. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon shows us that the GTX 760 really does perform about the same as the GTX 660 Ti in this particular game, especially once we overclock both cards. And finally, Crisis 3, we see a 10% difference in performance between the 760 and the GTX 660 Ti. So that was a bit of a, a patterned sort of performance rundown, wasn't it? Which leads us, more than anything else, to price to performance analysis. You get a bit of a savings versus the older 660 Ti. You get as good or better performance across the board compared to the GTX 660 Ti, and you get a very mature card running on the GK104 core, as well as a few more options. Because of that 256-bit bus, some manufacturers may opt to offer two gig and four gig configurations, whereas with 660 Ti, we were tied to two gig and three gig. However, it would be quite, um, quite debatable whether or not you would benefit 
get for more than two gigs with this card at this time because it's very optimized for 1080p and not really resolutions above that. Although for those high res texture gamers out there, yeah, you might want all the VRAM that you can possibly get. So in short, the 760 replaces the 660 Ti at a lower price point with more performance. Does it look quite like the generational boost in performance that we were looking for? Maybe not quite, especially when you compare it to something like 780 versus 680, but is it a worthy card at that price? I think the answer is yes. Thank you for checking out this 1080p performance review of the GTX 760 from NVIDIA. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.